Hey everybody, my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. And what I'm talking about today is articulating, the, understanding the minimum wage debate and being able to make arguments that are effective. Because oftentimes we make the same arguments and the same arguments will um, oftentimes have the same counter arguments. So for example, one argument will say, people will use is, well, if you increase the minimum wage, it's going to increase the price of everything. That's not necessarily the case. So you leave yourself open to a very easy counter argument because people can pull up you know, uh, price data for different municipalities that have increased their minimum wage, and some have price increases, some don't. The reason is, there's more than one way to deal with price increases, not just uh, increasing the price of your goods. And while that'd be the easiest way, and most companies would prefer, well, they don't want to raise the price on their goods because they'll, they'll lose customers, but sometimes that's the easiest way to do it if the good that you're selling has inelastic demand, which means if you raise the price, people aren't going to go away. But if you're like a candy store and you raise the prices of your candy, you're probably going to lose customers. So that means you're probably going to have to cut those costs elsewhere, which does mean lowering labor costs, possibly, which means unemployment. So there goes that another argument. Um, and or just basically taking lower profits. But then if you take lower profits, sure, that business takes lower profits. But it also means the next person who may want to start a candy store sees that the candy store makes less profits and they're like, doesn't seem like a worthwhile investment. So you actually reduce the amount of investment capital for that type of venture going forward. So again, you may be focusing on just the, the, the profits on the existing candy store, but you've just basically prevented the next candy store from existing because the margin may not be worthwhile to the investor versus other investments that may return more. Okay? So uh, there's different ways that ends up coming out of the economy and affecting the economy. Um, another argument we make is an unemployment argument, which is, you know, it can cause reduced costs. Again, the problem is you don't see a lot of this minimum wage effects very pronounced in data because it's not a huge amount of the population that actually works at the minimum wage. The way the minimum wage effects work is oftentimes a small amount of people actually do see an increase in their wage initially because, um, you know, they worked at minimum wage. So they were at $13 an hour, now they're at $15 an hour. Now, this does have an effect of pushing up some other people's wages, because if you're someone who was already working at $15 an hour, um, you're probably someone who had a slightly more skills that you could command $15 an hour before the minimum wage hike. So then now your employer is kind of pressured to give you a little bit more, so they may push you up to 16 or 17. This is part of the reason why, like in the Seattle data, um, while they didn't see much benefit at the lower wage levels, they saw a benefit at the high, uh, like slightly higher wage levels. So you'd see like an increase in like $19 an hour work, $17 an hour work, because all those jobs that used to be $15 an hour are now kind of pushed up a little bit. Because if not, I mean, if you have to, you have to do a, a, basically a harder job and an easier job for the same pay, then why do the harder job? Just do the easier job. So now I gotta offer you more. Um, another problem is, is what happens, well, what happens at that $15 an hour work. So if I was the $13 an hour worker, okay, who now got bumped up to 15, I'm and in the short run, I have a nice benefit. I'm like, oh, cool, I made two, making $2 an hour extra. Now, the company may have to try to deal with those labor costs. They may not fire people, so you may not see an, a decrease in actual number of people employed, but you may see a decrease in the hours worked. So they might make people um, work, have less people working each hour, or have a, so people are working less hours per week to help make up those costs. Or what they do is they're like, well, if I have to pay $15 an hour, then I might as well hire $15 an hour worth workers. So I'm gonna hire higher skilled workers because I might as well at least get my bang for my buck. So then what happens is that they'll start lowering the hours of those used to be 13 an hour workers, start hiring new workers who command $15 an hour and slowly over time replacing those old workers. So now that person who initially got a raise now is unemployed over time. It doesn't happen right away, okay? Because these things just don't happen right away. And so you, it'll seem like, okay, well, wow. And then that will improve, let's say, the quality of McDonald's because you have these higher level employees who may be better at customer service, maybe better attention to detail, and the overall experience of McDonald's may be better and, and people will be happy with the way their experience at McDonald's. But the problem is you've just distracted someone who prior to the minimum wage change worked somewhere else where probably that higher level of productivity they have was put to better use, was more necessary. And now you, you have them working at McDonald's where, you know what, it's nice maybe to have that extra productivity, but isn't necessary. It isn't as useful or as valuable to society, because if not, they would have already been working there. Um, 
So now you've distracted more productive labor from more productive uses. And that you can't quantify. You can't see what they would have been doing otherwise. But it's just logical that that's going to happen. I mean, again, when faced with these different decisions from the different actors, why wouldn't they make these decisions? And to me, those are the real effects that are kind of hard to argue against when it comes to minimum wage. Because if you start arguing, you know, outsourcing again, people will say, well, you can't really outsource, you know, a McDonald's to China. No one's going to go to China on their lunch break. It's true. They could shut down the McDonald's, though, just because they can't afford it. Um, and they'll be like, what about the profits of McDonald's? Well, the problem is most McDonald's aren't owned by McDonald's. They're franchises. And the profit margins of the franchise owners are very small. Even though McDonald's profits, which is a franchisor and a real estate company for the most part, are really large, have nothing to do with the labor costs of your individual McDonald's stores. Again, you'd, in that case, you would want to take a look at a Wendy's, which then has who operates its own stores, which has a much smaller, uh, you know, uh, profit margin. But here's a lot of different discussions back and forth that you hear when you when you hear people talk about the minimum wage, and. Um, whether it gets people to spend more, people say, well, you know, you're giving money from rich people to poor people and the poor people are more likely to spend it. That's assuming that consumption is the only thing that drives the economy. Consumption only can help people buy stuff that exists now. The stuff that's going to exist tomorrow comes from savings and investment. So if there's less savings and less investment going on to produce things tomorrow, there'll be less things tomorrow. And it doesn't matter how much money people have to consume with because there's less stuff tomorrow. Um, and we're all worse off and it takes years for the next set of investments to pan out. So even if you increase the amount of money everyone has, it doesn't necessarily mean more stuff magically appears. So you, so again, for that example, where basically that next candy store won't open because it's less profitable to start the next candy store because of the change in the dynamics. So there are real things, and a lot of times the, the negative effects you don't see right away. They happen over time, and they happen so further into the future that you won't even be able to directly see that it's because of the minimum wage or other such policies that cause these problems. But it doesn't necessarily mean we, don't, we need to make sure we discuss it so people can understand what they're getting into. So my name is Alex Brissett from alexbrissett.com. Have a great day and enjoy.